Hello, this is Alex Voss, your professor in TV eCourse, and I want to welcome you to our section on transistors. And what a better place to do it than where I am right now, the campus of Texas Instruments. Texas Instruments is one of the largest manufacturers of semiconductor products in the world and premier in the development of semiconductor and transistor technology. They started transistor technology production back in the 1950s, and they're well known worldwide for their influence on semiconductor and transistor technology. Well, let's begin our course and have fun learning about transistors. Okay, let's go over transistor terms. Now, I'm just going to introduce you to these terms, and there's some wonderful resources on the internet. And at the end of this training, I'm going to give you a list of resources I'd like you to uh, resources I'd like you to look at. But let's just go over the terms to introduce you to them. Alpha, and we're going here sort of alphabetically. Alpha is the emitter to collector current gain in the common base circuit of a transistor. A base is a region that lies between the collector and the emitter of a transistor. A collector is a region through which we have the primary flow of charged carriers and that the ones that leave the base. Emitter is the region in which we have the injected charge carriers. And so that takes care of those three. Now let's talk about transistor amplifier configurations in our transistor terms. A common base it's a, is, a, is a transistor amplifier that has the base common to both the input and the output. Normally the emitter is used as the input and the collector is used as the output and the base is common to both sides and you'll see here we have a signal coming in the DC component is is uh, or the AC, yeah the DC component is is isolated using this capacitor and so we have a bias here called our voltage emitter right here minus VEE that is then fed through R1 and then that causes a bias here at the emitter of this transistor. The base goes directly to ground. Then we have our voltage here for our collector and that is fed through R2 and then the output signal would be seen here. This is the typical common base configuration. VBB is the base, the base supplied voltage, supply voltage. It's right here. It's fed to the base through this resistor. VCC is the collector supply voltage. Here's the collector. This is the voltage supplied to the collector through that resistor. VEE is the emitter supply voltage. VBE, VBE is the voltage dropped across the base in the emitter. VCB is the collector, CB is the collector to base voltage drop. VCE is the collector to emitter voltage drop. IC is the current flowing through the collector. Here's the collector and we have this current flowing through it. IC is the current flowing through a collector. IE is the current flowing through an emitter. And IB is the current flowing through the base. A common collector, a common collector is another term we use with transistors. It's also called the emitter follower. It's a transistor circuit configuration in which the collector is the element common to both input and output circuits. This configuration does not produce a phase shift between the input and the output. We have a signal in going to the base. The collector is common to both sides. And, and we have our emitter here with a resistor and the output uh, is on the emitter in a common collector circuit. The output signal is on the emitter in a common collector circuit. The most common transistor amplifiers is the common emitter. A circuit configuration, this is a circuit configuration in which the emitter of a transistor is the element common to both the input and output circuits. The common emitter configuration produces a phase shift 
of 180 degrees between the input to the ampli uh, output. But it, it, it's probably one of the most common amplifying configurations of a transistor. The emitter is going right here to ground. It's common to both the input and the output. And we have a capacitor here, C1, which has the function of decoupling DC. The signal is fed through R R1. And we would probably see a bias uh, applied to this point to give us a base bias for the transistor to work. And that signal is fed to the base and that modulates the flow of current up through the emitter and going up here through this resistor to the voltage that supplies the collector, the positive voltage that supplies the collector. And this voltage drop across this resistor, actually this, the transistor acts as a resistor to this point. This resistor acts as a resistor between the VCC to that point and this whole transistor between ground and this point here. And so it's like two resistors as far as this point is concerned. And as this resistance of this transistor varies, the voltage divide between this resistor and this imaginary resistor produces a voltage at this point. Because the signal going into the base of this transistor is causing this transistor to vary in its resistance, then the voltage drop, uh, the voltage divided between this resistor and this imaginary resistor is constantly changing depending upon the signal on the base. And so this voltage at, uh, at this point is going up and down, up and down depending on uh, what you want to, um, you know, what, what this transistor is doing. That makes a signal on the output decoupled with the DC decoupled by this capacitor. Notice this in, the input is swinging positive and then negative, but the output is swinging negative and then positive. This is a 180 degrees phase shift in this amplifier. Here's some more transistor terms. A Darlington transistor is, a, is an amplifier and it's also called a double emitter follower. Two transistors are built into one in a Darlington arrangement so they can operate as if they were a single transistor. A Darlington pair can be produced by using individual transistors or purchased as a single transistor built into one container. And this shows the construction of a Darlington transistor. Cutoff current is, uh, the cutoff current is, is the measured value of DC current when the transistor is reversed biased by a voltage less than the breakdown voltage. So it basically it's where the, the transistor is not going to conduct. Okay, continuing on with our terms, uh, depletion, or let me get this straightened out here for you. Okay, the depletion region is a region in a semiconductor where essentially all free electrons and holes have been swept out by the electrostatic field inherent in the transistor material caused by the interaction of the doped region. The, dope, the dopant causes a basic charge in the structure of the transistor and, and because we have uh, this basic charge is arranged between the two regions, the depletion region is created by these doped regions of an N and P type material. So we have an electrostatic field built into this region and it exists on both sides of a reverse bias semiconductor junction in which free carriers are removed from the vicinity of the junction, which means you have no holes that can move or no electrons that can move. And so the depletion region basically exists in the transistor when nothing's going on. And it's 0.7 volts in a silicon transistor, 0.3 volts in a germanium transistor. And so that, that basically is what uh, we have to overcome that bias for a transistor to start to work. An active device is a device that can amplify, okay? If we say it's an active device, it's an amplifier. Now, and then there's another term, major majority and minority car carriers. There are two recognized types of charge carriers in semiconductors. One is electrons, which carry the 
negative electric charge. In addition, we think of it as convenient to treat the traveling vacancies when the electrons leave an atom and in the valence band of an atom, the hole that was left is the second type of charge carrier. It's a nothing, but it's a positive charge compared to an electron, and so it's equal in magnitude and opposite to the charge of an electron, even though it's a hole, it's nothing. But in comparison, we say that when electrons are moving one direction, they create a hole where they left, and that makes a positive charge where they left, and that makes a negative charge where they went to. Uh, BJT stands for a bipolar junction transistor, um, and uh, FET stands for a field effect transistor. And of course the transistor layers are either NPN or PNP, as determined by the dopants in the different regions. So a layer is also the different regions of a transistor. <clears throat> now another transistor term which is interesting is saturation, okay? Saturation occurs when a base current and collector current condition re is resulted when you actually put, if it's an NPN transistor like a common emitter amplifier and we put as much positive on the base as we can and the transistor cannot conduct anymore. That's called saturation. A base current and collector current condition resulting in a forward bias collector, collector junction. The condition existing in which a transistor cannot increase anymore, cannot produce a higher output. The operating point of a transistor in which uh, a further increase of the base current no longer produces an increase in the collector current, or the, um, uh, an increase in the base bias is no, go no longer going to create an increase in total transistor current flow. And also when we think of a transistor as a, a variable resistor, when we have an NPN and we bias the base positive, it takes the total resistance of the transistor down because more current will flow through the transistor, so the internal resistance of the transistor is decreased. And so when we give it the maximum amount of positive bias on the base, the NPN common emitter transistor, uh, it's going to conduct to a maximum amount and it's gone to the minimum amount of resistance that the transistor is going to have at that point and it cannot conduct anymore and it's saturated. And so that's what we talk about in that condition. Storage time. It's an increase in the time required to turn off a transistor after the device has been driven into saturation. Once it's fully saturated, if you cut it off, it takes a little time for it to cut off. And we have the terms HFB, HFC, and HFE, which is referring to small signal short circuit forward current transfer ratio. Uh, and this is in a common base, common collector, common emitter. The HFE is the ratio of current through the collector IC to the base, through the base IB, usually at a range of 50 to 100. Okay, uh, HIB, HIC, and HIE is a small signal short circuit input impedance. Okay, and again the transistor junctions, we talked about those, emitter, base, and collector.